time when we have congestion on our roadways, we're looking for more reliable routes and the ferry provides that. Hundreds commute by ferries across Puget Sound daily, but what about ferry boats on Lake Washington? And it's art with an audience. How live painting is captivating art lovers in Seattle. These stories and more are coming up next on this episode of City Stream. Welcome to City Stream. I'm Abby Gibb and take a look at where we're at. Madison Beach Park right here on the beautiful Lake Washington. It's a little quiet here in the fall, usually pretty packed in the summer as people enjoy cooling off. You may not also realize the history behind this portion of the water, but before the 1950s there was a ferry service here and now local lawmakers are looking at bringing that back to ease congestion. ready to trade in your frustration of traffic for the tranquility of the water. It's generating a lot of excitement. The King County Transportation Committee is considering bringing back ferry service to Lake Washington. At this time when we have congestion on our roadways, we're looking for more reliable routes and the ferry provides that. County Council Member Rob Dombowski chairs the Transportation Committee. He decided a few years back to study the feasibility of ferry service. As the traffic jams on the 520 and I-90 are only getting worse. And that is just gridlocked. Your commute times can vary there from a half hour to an hour and a half. It's not reliable. We don't have a lot of choices on roads today. Welcome the Lake Washington ferry idea. It's not like our area isn't familiar with ferries. We have the largest system in the country, and the county already runs the water taxi to West Seattle. It's a more costly option, for sure, than adding more bus capacity. But buses without corridors, um, they get stuck in traffic, too. The county has been studying the Lake Washington ferry idea for years, but Dombowski says this time it's different. Along with the traffic, more people are moving to the north and east sides. And now there's light rail on the University of Washington campus. Get on a boat. If you're a student at the University of Washington, you're at school. If you work downtown, you get on light rail. Eight minutes later, you're downtown. The report identified three potential routes, Kirkland and Kenmore to the University of Washington and Ballard's Shilsho Bay Marina to Pier 50 in downtown Seattle. Chances are they'd start with Kirkland. So this is going to take quite a while, though. This is not an overnight Yeah, it takes situation. time. These boats are expensive to acquire. What we're looking at here are the Williamson collection of photographs. If you remember back at the beginning of the story, I said the county wants to bring service back to Lake Washington. Well, we're going to be looking for inland, I think, for the most part. Well, that's because before 1950, ferry service here on the lake was a staple. Okay, we scored. <clears throat> Whoa. This is the Atlanta. And, and the man who can tell you all about it, like Joe Barr. He's a volunteer with Mohai's Georgetown Library. At the time, there were very few roads and a lot of people needing to get from one place to another. He tells us back around 1890, small passenger boats started popping up on Lake Washington. By the turn of the century, they were packed. The Atlanta, which was built in 1908, Let's take a look. Okay, they're passenger only. There's probably, I don't know, over 100 people, maybe 200 people on that boat. Around the First World War, roads were being built and the ferries reincarnated. There were auto ferries that went like from Kirkland to Madison Park. Including this one, the Leshy, and two others. And they were all not very large compared to what we have today, by any means, and the cars sort of fit into the middle. What happened in the 1950s that all of this ended up stopping? Roads. Roads. I mean, there was, the, the floating bridge came in, and you didn't need service to Mercer Island anymore, and you could get to Kirkland in under an hour. But just like fashion, what was once in style comes back around. Now the ferry might be the answer to getting us out of our man-made construction crunch. There's some issues we're going to have to work through. There's some implications. It's not easy. Uh, we got to look at the funding, uh, but we think it could make sense. 
buying or leasing boats plus building ports could cost around 20 million bucks. The county also wants to see shuttles in Kirkland to bring people to the port since room for parking isn't an option. The thing about the waters is they're our last uncongested place and we can deliver reliable ferry service and get folks to and from their destinations on time every day. The final study could be done by the end of fall and lawmakers could take action as early as the start of next year. From ferries to planes to local music, how the Emerald City is shining a light on music to welcome travelers to town. City Street will be right back. When you think about going to the airport, what comes to mind? Probably a lot of long lines, rushing around trying to find your gate. But if you've been to SeaTac recently, you might have a very different experience. And that's thanks to a brand new music program. Nicole Sanchez tells us more about why it's become a hit with travelers. Take another whiskey, you keep talking to me. It might seem like a concert. My lady, it's been a day or two ago. And, well, it is. But this performance is happening at a very unexpected location, the Seattle-Tacoma International Airport. It's so nice to come after a stressful flight and regular little kids and have a little lunch and listen to some music. Um, it's wonderful. They've got a great artist. Well, I think music has such a, a profound ability to put people in a certain state of mind or state of being. And so I just felt like, I just felt joy in my spirit. Several dozen local musicians are now performing live on a regular basis at SeaTac. It's part of the airport's Experience the City of Music program. It's a partnership between the Port of Seattle, the Office of Film and Music, the Seattle Music Commission and Play Network. We like to call ourselves the City of Music and we like to welcome our visitors to the city 
embracing that and having them experience the city of music. That's really the goal of this initiative, is for them to know what a great music city they've arrived in. There's 32 million people that travel through the airport on an annual basis. It's the first touch point of them reaching our city, and we wanted to provide a really great cultural exposure to uh, all the great things we have to offer around musicians, live music, and music business in general. Honey, we don't know the change, change, the change. The partnership started a few years ago and includes overhead music that is played exclusively by Northwest artists. There are also more than 200 safety messages like this one, recorded by 40 local artists like Macklemore, which make them a little more fun. Hi, I'm Macklemore. Welcome to one of the greenest airports in the world. This region is known for its environmental awareness and its diverse music. The music that you are listening to is part of that great tradition. Enjoy. Came out of this place, someone you could lend a hand. Live music is performed seven days a week throughout the terminal, with at least three artists performing at once. It's a win-win for both the airport, travelers, and also the local musicians who are getting some great exposure. I love performing here at the airport. Um, I get to meet so many cool people, eat both while they're wandering around, and then a lot of people find me on Instagram and Twitter and places like that, and I get like comments from all over the place, and it's always so much fun. You know, at a typical concert outside of the airport, we don't sell nearly as many CDs and things like that. So it's just huge. Um, a lot of people grabbing business cards, calling us later, saying, hey, I live in, you know, such and such part of the country. Would you ever come over and, and visit this, this neck of the woods? And so it, it's just uh, literally thousands of people every day that we wouldn't be seeing elsewhere. And the opportunity is just huge. And a first of its kind, there's even a record label retail store located at the airport. Seattle-based Sub Pop opened last May here at the airport and is also hosting local musicians who are helping to change the airport experience. We love that we can serve as um, a first impression for people coming to the city or a last impression leaving. We hope we can bring some music and merchandise uh, to the people at the airport. <laughs> it all adds up to a lot of musical changes at the airport designed to both enhance travelers' experiences and also celebrate the music of the Northwest. It's been so successful, there are even plans to expand the program in the future. We want to get it to the point where, you know, you just don't know who you're going to see playing out here. Um, we're really getting some really good feet, solid footing on the ground where, you know, it'd be really great that to have just our local artists that are more well known come through and just, you know, maybe stop in and just play a song with one of our musicians that are already here playing. SeaTech Airport is in many ways Seattle's front door to the world. So we want SeaTech to be the most welcoming front door it can be and having local Northwest music uh, populated by all these fabulous artists that we have is one of the ways that we can really present a fabulous front door for Seattle. And SeaTac is partnering with the Experience Music Project to showcase exhibits about some of Seattle's most famous musicians. Of course, people like Jimi Hendrix, Pearl Jam, and just using your mobile device, you can listen to it all for free using the airport's free Wi-Fi. So if you want to find out more about exactly when all of this is happening, when you are going to SeaTac next, just head over to their website at portofseattle.org slash SeaTac. When CityStream returns, some artists create masterpieces in solitude, but for others, a live audience is part of the creative process.
It's a dynamic new art form, especially popular in Japan, and it's coming right here to Seattle. It's called live painting, and an artist can do massive pieces of art right before your very eyes and a lot faster than any of us could think it was possible. Brian Callanan tells us a little bit more about this cross-cultural connection while sitting down with one of the foremost painters. It is part music and part rhythm. A controlled explosion of creativity, crafted by a master. His name is Boshiko, and his art is known as live painting, where in about 30 minutes, he covers a nearly 10 by 10 foot expanse of rice paper with beauty. <laughs> Boshiko says his inspiration comes from his love of art, but his speed? Well, as he puts it, that's just his personality. <laughs> Boshiko focuses on images like dragons that are sacred to his native Japan. <laughs> In words as free as his paintbrushes, he describes live painting for an audience like realizing someone is watching him eat a meal. Or as a refreshing moment, like taking a shower in a hot spring. Or even as a challenge to other artists to test his techniques and fight against him. It's like uh, his body itself is a brushes. He doesn't think much of the designs or layouts before he starts painting. And his body and hand uh, moves automatically. The art of live painting has been around for decades, but Bushiko, a pioneer of this popular technique in Japan, is hoping his work can create some new cultural connections with Seattle. Washington to Hyogo. Bushiko's home prefecture, Hyogo, is a sister state to Washington, and its capital city, Kobe, is a sister city to Seattle, creating a natural tie for Bushiko's work to the Northwest. And while he says he tries not to pay attention to his audience when he's painting, clearly, they're paying attention to him. <laughs> Welcome to Miyagi, a local Japanese restaurant where owner Hisako Ishikura is serving up some awe-inspiring art along with dinner on a Tuesday night. It's just incredible. Ishikura saw Bashiko paint at a sushi and sake festival in Seattle a few years ago and has invited him back to her restaurant ever since. That's kind of, you know, good mix energy to bring to Seattle City. Ishikura says Bushiko's combination of traditional sumi ink and holy images with a new method of performance art illustrates the changing nature of Japanese American culture. He used a different style and a different technique. And, you know, so just not only our authentic Japanese style, but he just kind of mixed new style. So it's every time each event will get surprised. Sometimes that surprise means literally turning his art upside down during a live painting performance and turning heads like Carolyn Aoki's. I've never seen such intricate and detailed painting in such a short amount of time. I love it. Aoki, a third generation Japanese American here with her daughters for dinner, says this is the art of her grandparents, of Japan's past, fast forwarding into the future. It's also exciting to see that it's being carried forward because we see this kind of ink and paint and everything. We see it in old pictures, but we don't see it currently, and I think it's wonderful. So what is that pull of an ancient culture, that rhythm that draws people to Bushiko's art? Magic. Magic? That might be the best explanation for a piece of art so intricate, painted so quickly, you won't believe your eyes. Pretty amazing work, and if you'd like to learn more about Bashiko, check out his website at bashiko.com. And we will be right back. Your city, your stories on City Stream. 
Fighting robots and golfing hot shots. Picture taking cats in stylish hats. Exploring the beach and delicious treats. Silver bowls and painting walls. Bicycle cops and Seattle grown crops. SUPs and urban trees. City bees and jogging dogs. Historic halls and pickle balls. Baby seals and cheap deals. Your city, your stories on City Stream. Thursdays at 7 p.m. on Seattle Channel 21 at any time on seattlechannel.org. From art to music to a little bit of Seattle history that could be coming back, I think we've pretty much covered it all. Thanks for watching City Stream. I'm Abby Gibb. To learn more about City Stream and the Seattle Channel, find us on Facebook and Twitter. You can also watch us on our Comcast HD Channel 321 and on Wave Cable Channel 721.